And guys, I hope you enjoyed the Liverpool video, which obviously will be the video you've watched unless this one uploads beforehand. But if not, hope you enjoy both videos. Uh, the other team in Liverpool's group, of, co of course, was Real Madrid and Luda Goretz. Real Madrid won this game by four goals to nil. Marcelino was sent off for blocking a Real Madrid header off the line. The ball then broke to Bale and he put the ball into the back of net. But the goal was not given and a penalty was given to Real Madrid, which Ronaldo stuck away. Bale was not to be denied, though. He headed in the second goal to make it the 2-0. Then Real Madrid made it 3-0 when Arbelo was unaware that the ball crossed the line. Bale's header as well that they kind of thought for maybe for a second that it crossed the line, but again, clearly crossed the line. And then the fourth goal from Medran was his first goal for the club, and it took a massive deflection over the goalkeeper looking to the back of the net, and it was 4 0. And that completed a 100% record for the reigning Champions League champions and the best team in Europe at the moment. And it's really hard to look past them at this present time. Galatasaray were once again humbled by Arsenal. Adam Ramsey played in Podolski, hammered the ball past the Spanish goalkeeper for 1 0 with that vicious left foot of his. Adam Ramsey then added a second. It was a nice finish in the bottom right, right hand corner. He was played in by Oxlade Chamberlain. Some controversy were fell prior to the goal from uh, Podolski. 3 0 Arsenal. It was an incredible goal by Adam Ramsey. The ball broke to him from 35 yards and he's hit it on the, on the kind of half volley, arrowed it into the top corner of the net. It was a tremendous goal. If you haven't seen it, it's a goal worth seeing. Terrific goal, and that was 3 0 to Arsenal as he really showed what a top, top player the Ramsey is. He was one of their better players last season when he was playing, and he was getting goals for them, and he's such a crucial player to the club, there's no question. Wesley Snyder pulled one back for hapless guy, Tassai, who arguably are one of the worst sides in this season's Champions League, with a trademark free kick from just on the day. And then Podolski got a deserved second, as he played very well last night. He pushed through into the box and slid the ball past the disappearing goalkeeper for the fourth and final goal, and it was a deserved victory for Arsenal. But they couldn't top the group. Borussia Dortmund knew that a draw was enough against Anderlecht, and that's exactly what they did get. Immobile scored the opener, ending a terrific passing move with a good finish into the bottom corner. It was a typical Dortmund goal, although their league form has certainly not been typical. As they're now they're at the moment languishing uh, mid-table. Mitrovic equalised with a header, and it was an assist from Van den Bora, who crossed the ball into him. And Anderlecht got a draw. Anderlecht gave a good account themselves in the Champions League this season, but of course they weren't really going to make it out of this group. Juventus did just enough to make it into the last 16 after missing out last time. It, a 0-0 draw at home to Atletico was enough. Koke was denied by Buffon. It was a good save. Juventus. Then Jimenez came close to the header and Buffon tipped it over. Then Mario Suarez was denied by a save by Buffon. Vidal was then denied at the other end by Oblak. A rare chance for the home side and that was uh, the first half. The first half was all Atletico. The second half Juventus came into a bit more. Pogba had an effort goal. It was spilled by Oblak. And it was a bit of a scramble, but the Spanish champion survived. Both teams had their their chances, but a draw seemed a fair result. A game of two halves is how I would describe this one. Olympiacos did all they, they could to qualify, knew, knowing it wasn't in their hands. If Juventus and Atletico had a draw, Juventus won the match. They dispatched of Malmo with a 4-2 home win. Fusto opened the score for poor defending by Malmo, but they then equalised when they were put when uh, Kroon was put through, and it was a great finish to get 1-1 to give them their third goal of the tournament. Olympiacos made it 2-1 with Dominguez finishing well, then Rosenberg made it 2-2. Petroglou then made it 3-2 from a scrappy goal, and then there was a fourth goal added from Afalai, who's on loan from Barcelona, and Olympiacos will drop into the Europa League. Benfica and Bayer Leverkusen played it a 0-0 draw, which meant Benfica finished bottom, which was really poor by their standard, and Leverkusen were top to top spot by low-scoring Monaco, which you'll hear more in a minute. Benfica hit the bar through Lima, should have scored, he then fired wide of a poor effort in the box. Cesar then headed over and in a draw affair, Benfica didn't get the win they deserved. They were all over the German side, but they couldn't get the goal to restore some sort of pride to their uh, campaign. And Benfica were eliminated. Monaco, who surely sco have scored and conceded the least amount of goals in this season's Champions League, claimed top spot in the group with a 2-0 win at home to Zenit, which means the Russian side drop into Europa League. Monaco took the lead for free kick, played in, and Abdenur headed in, and then Fabiano added the second to seal the points and top spot. Monaco actually went through in the group with four goals and one conceded, which is incredible how low a total that was. It really is mind-boggling. And in tonight's games, Bayern Munich beat CSK Moscow 3-0. They were already secured top spot. Manchester City beat Roma 
goals from Nasri and Zabaleta was enough there. Ajax got a 4-0 win at home to Apple Nicosia. Barcelona beat Paris Saint-Germain by 3 goals to 1. Chelsea beat Sporting Lisbon by 3 goals to 1. All teams that were secured through were secured with uh, qualification anyway. Inky Maribor lost 1-0 at home to Schalke. Atletico Bilbao beat Batty Borisov 2-0. And FC Porto and Shakhtar Donetsk played out a 1-1 draw. So what does this mean for the groups? Well, we'll just um, see. And then we'll um, end this video. So let me see. So Atletico Madrid and Juventus qualified from Group A. Atletico Madrid with 13 points, Juventus with 10 points. Group B, like I said, Real Madrid won every game. They qualified with 18 points. And Baal qualified in second place with 7 points. It was a very close run thing in the end. Group C, Monaco were top of the group with 11 points with a goal difference of 3. Bayer Leverkusen were second with 10 points. Group D, Arsenal and Borussia Dortmund finished in the same points with 13 points. But Borussia Dortmund went through on goal difference, which Arsenal were not going to turn around. Group E, Bayern Munich went through 15 points. They won every game except from one of the matches against Manchester City, who went through in second place on 8 points. Group F, Barcelona went through in 15 points. Paris Saint-Germain went, went, were second on 13 points. Group G, Chelsea went through in 14 points, undefeated, 4 wins, 2 draws. And Schalke went through in second place, 8 points, just pipping Sporting Lisbon, who lost to Chelsea in the last game. Porto and Schalke, sort of shut to Donetsk, were already through. They played out a 1-1 draw, and Porto were already assured top spot. They go through with 14 points and Shakhtar Donetsk were second with 9 points. So this is very exciting stuff. Obviously the Champions League now takes a break for until February for the last 16 draws. So obviously most of the big hitters are still in the tournament. No real kind of shocks there. You know, you probably, probably on paper from the teams that went out, you probably would have expected it. Except from uh, the likes of Liverpool, possibly Benfica as well. I would say you probably would have expected Zenit and Petersburg because the Russian teams do normally disappoint in the Champions League, but in the Europa League they really do come into their own. Okay, well that's it for this extensive coverage of uh, the Champions League video. And there will hopefully be a video there at the weekend. As there's some big games on Sunday, as I've already mentioned. There's the Manchester United and Liverpool game, and I don't get bigger than that.